Should the government be seizing reporters' phone records and emails, and would you prevent your Justice Department from doing that? Only yours, but beyond yours, <laughs> they no. prevent, no. But it honestly. Should, absolutely, positively, it's wrong. It's simply, simply wrong. So you won't let your Justice Department do that? I will not that. let that happen. Absolutely positively wrong. Hi again, everyone. It's five o'clock in the East. An unambiguous President Biden there on the practice undertaken by past presidents of seizing through subpoenas or search warrants the communication records of journalists. It's one his administration will take no part in. President Biden drawing a red line. And it's all the more significant today as we learn of yet another instance in which the Trump Justice Department secretly obtained phone records of reporters in an attempt to discover their sources. The New York Times reports this, quote, Biden's Justice Department informed the Times that law enforcement officials had seized phone records from January 14th to April 30th, 2017 for four Times reporters, Matt Apuzo, Adam Goldman, Eric Lichtblau and Michael Schmidt. The Justice Department did not say which article was being investigated, but the lineup of reporters and the timing suggested that the leak investigation related to classified information reported in an April 22, 2017 article that the four reporters wrote about how Jim Comey, then the FBI director, handled politically charged investigations during the 2016 presidential election. If that is true, it shows just how deep Donald Trump's vendetta against the former FBI director Jim Comey went. Comey, who refused to grant Trump loyalty and refused to drop an investigation into former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn at Trump's request, was fired by the ex-president in May of 2017. The Times reports this, quote, after his dismissal, Mr. Comey engineered through his friend, Daniel Richman, a Columbia University law professor, the disclosure to the Times of accounts of several of his conversations with the president related to the Russia investigation. This latest Times reporting marks the third time in just recent weeks that we've learned of Trump's Justice Department seizing journalists' records, and the second time that a key flashpoint in the Russia investigation may have been at the center. From the Washington Post reporting last month detailing how records of three of their reporters were taken. Quote, toward the end of the time period mentioned in the letters, those reporters wrote a story about classified U.S. intelligence intercepts indicating that in 2016, Senator Jeff Sessions had discussed the Trump campaign with Sergei Kislyak. He was Russia's ambassador to the U.S., a practice that surged under the former guy who called the press the enemy of the people that is now being halted by the current president, Joe Biden, is where we start this hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Betsy Woodruff-Swan is here, national correspondent at Politico and an MSNBC contributor. Also joining us, Pete Strzok, former FBI counterintelligence agent and author of the book Compromised. And Michael Shear is here, New York Times White House correspondent. Um, it's great to have you, um, Mike. Tell me more about what you know about how much data. Was it just phone records? Was it emails? What was, what was seized by... I presume it's the Bar Justice Department. Right. So our understanding is that uh, phone records were seized. That generally shows the sort of who was called and, and, and obviously doesn't contain the actual contents of the, the, the audible call. Um, there apparently was also at least an, an, an intent to also get uh, the sort of same kind of to and from information about the email records for my colleagues, though uh, it appears from the Justice Department that actually didn't occur. Um, the thing that's so striking about this, Nicole, and so, um, um, you know, put such fear into the into the into a, those of us who care about journalism and um, accountability is the idea that this happened not right around the time uh, that uh, the Justice Department would have been offended potentially by the article that ran, but rather years later, right? This was the Trump Justice Department coming back in 2020 and 2019, uh, looking back years, as you described it, in a, in a kind of long-standing uh, campaign uh, against Jim Comey and against uh, the uh, effort to uh, to try to and for the effort to try to dig out uh, the sources for those articles and I think that's what's pretty striking and and if you care about journalism and you care about uh, people being willing to talk to journalists um, uh, freely without without fear of this kind of witch hunt uh, then you know then it's not something that you want to see happen. Michael Shear, can you tell us more about what the Trump administration might have been looking for in the reporting that sort of fell under the bylines of these four journalists and that fell into the dates? 
I mean, we know that Comey was um, a dark obsession of Donald Trump's, but you're right. This was four years later. Were they still, I mean, we know from some of your colleagues reporting, he was obsessed with trying to prosecute Hillary Clinton and Jim Comey. Was he still trying to do that in 2020? I mean, it's, it cert certainly appears that. I mean, look, we don't know, as you said in your report, that there's there's no explanation that the Justice Department gives in the uh, in the letters that they they sent to our colleagues informing them of this uh, uh, of this attempt to get at their phone records. But I think what you can draw from it is that there were. Um, there, were, there was a classified document that was uh, mentioned in the article that my four colleagues wrote at the time back in early 2017 uh, that had to do with the Russia investigation and Jim Comey's con concerns about Russia meddling in the 2016 campaign. And that appears to be uh, what, uh, uh, what the Justice Department was trying to get at. They wanted to know, was it Jim Comey uh, who leaked this to uh, to my colleagues. And, uh, you know, it appears that uh, several years after the potential, uh, you know, after the story ran, they were still obsessed with that question.